Even though people try to respect each other, people have different ideas for respect. And some people believe that respect is by going path A and others path B. And some people get offended by people going path A and path B. So people don't try to like disrespect each other, but sometimes they'll show the wrong form of respect. What you need to do is like you need to understand the person, what they like, what they dislike. Once people do feel disrespected though, then they will then intentionally show disrespect. And then that's when people begin disrespecting each other. Like I've seen like kids yelling at their parents because the kids didn't feel like they were being respected by their parents. There was time in my life where I learned I was being disrespectful. I have a younger sister and like we'll get into the occasional fight and sometimes I'll persist on it because like I'm getting frustrated. And in return, like, whenever I want something from her, she won't give it to me. Why? Because I haven't showed her enough respect where she can get, show me back the respect. So that's why I learned from those arguments. I, I don't mean to do it, but it just, it kind of aggravates me, you know, when someone doesn't respect you, especially the people who just don't respect you for no apparent reason. Like, they just have a thing against you, like, from the, from the start. The moment they see you, they just, I don't like that kid. And I hate it when people do that to me. And I've had several times where that's happened, and you know, sometimes I just snap. Like, and it takes a lot for me to snap. When my siblings and I start fighting, like it, it goes from the small disagreement to the big verbal battle where it just it blows out of proportion. And that's when we really start like hitting below the belt with each other, and it gets absolutely ridiculous. I could definitely agree with that because I'm an only child, so like my mom's like my older sister, so like one little thing will happen, and it'll just blow up to this whole big mess that yeah. and I guess yeah. I start to disrespect her a bit. I don't mean to, but it happens sometimes. Yeah, that's like me. My mom and I fight constantly. And like I don't mean to disrespect her respect her because like I do care about her a lot, but it just happens. And also my sip my brother, I fight with him all the time too. Yeah, I try to respect my family, but we you're with them twenty four seven, so they're gonna get on your nerves. I end up bad mouthing the other person back and it just, you know, it gets out of hand. You get in an argument with the person. And... and with your parents, like when they tell you to do chores or something, go outside and do it, and you don't necessarily want to, like that's disrespecting them. You should realize that they're working hard for like making food for you and providing a roof over you, so you should really respect them. I agree with that. Like your parents are like helping you with everything in your life, so you should really respect them more than anyone. And I know I used to like fight with my mom a lot, and like I wouldn't really respect her, but like as I'm getting older I'm like respecting her more and I see that I get a lot more when I do respect her than when I don't. As teenagers we try to be respectful for our parents but we're going through puberty, having physiological changes, it's not that easy. And I also think that um, I'm also an only child so when I do things with my friends or like for instance I'm, I'm on a production team of a musical right now and I'm trying to do everything because I'm used to doing everything because I'm you know, usually alone and you know, I, take, I take charge and you know, I'm taking other people's jobs and they're mad at me and I don't mean to be disrespectful in that way I'm just trying to look out for the show but I really need to realize that I have my job, I should do this, they have their they job, let them do that. You know, Ulysses S. Grant was actually a very independent thinker, and he once said that every human being of whatever origin or of whatever station deserves respect. We must each respect others, even as we respect ourselves. So who are some of the people you respect? That's what we ask the teens on the street. Let's check it out. I respect my parents, I respect some of my friends, not all of them. And uh, I respect, uh, respect my girlfriend, she's cool. And uh, I try to have respect for myself. The people I respect my most are my friends, uh, my true friends. People that are successful because they made it there. Father and mother because they raised me and they helped me become a good Christian. My parents and, you know, just because they've always been there for me. I respect my family the most because I know they'll always be there for me. Probably my parents. Um, I can't really find any faults with them, so. They're pretty good people, so I respect them definitely. My mother, because she is this really, really strong woman, you know, she's actually the reason why I am today, and my father, because he just inspires me to just go out and do everything I possibly can. People I respect the most are people who are like me, I guess. People that go to church, the priests, you know, because they kind of keep us under control, and just really everybody, you know, I try to respect everybody. I, you know what I mean? I look up to a lot of people. So who are the people you look up to and respect? Definitely my parents, 100%. Because no matter what I do, they're always behind me. They're pretty much like my rock. Like I tell them everything. I look up to them. I always take their advice. I love hearing their advice. So without them, life would be real difficult. 
Like I definitely respect my parents as well, and and yeah, and you know, like what she said, like you know, you know, if they didn't like push me or anything, like I wouldn't be where I am today. Yeah, one of my friends actually, her name's Alexa. She's one of my role models. She's just probably one of the most genuine people I've ever met. She's always kind to everybody in our school. She doesn't judge people, and she just looks at the looks at them for the good qualities they have. Someone who does that and works hard to try to be nice to everybody, I really respect them a lot. My basketball coach, she really like brings everyone together as a team and it's hard to do with teenage girls like we're all so different but she when she's there she brings us all together and she really she's really into her faith and she makes time for God and she has a good career too so she balances everything and that's really something to look up to because that's hard to do. I think one of the teens on the street had said that he respects people that are like him and I think that's good but I also think that's important to be wide in your range of people who you respect because you never know who you're going to meet throughout your life and I think at a young age we should all start early and try to respect different people for who they are and what they do for us or what they do for other people. Mm -hmm. Respecting someone just like yourself like that's easy to do it's hard to respect everyone and that's what you really have to push for because if you're just gonna hang out with people who are just like you that's boring like you're not gonna learn anything new and like I learned my friends were all totally different but I learned new things from each one of them and it kinda makes me who I am and I'm becoming a better person because I'm with other people that aren't just like myself. And you know people that I respect very often are teachers who respect their students. The teachers who try to help you become a better you. And they not only expand your knowledge, but expand your, your personality and your views of the world. And Mr. Welsh is my religion teacher. He was a good guy. He really helped my view of religion to expand a lot. And he didn't force it on us. You know, like he, to he even told us a lot of times, he's like, you don't have to believe everything I'm telling you. Like, this is all faith-based. Like, this is religion class. You know, this isn't math class. But teachers like that are, are really good role models for a lot of us. They're like Jesus, you know, the greatest example of all teachers. He was an example of how to be a teacher and a servant. And Jesus was always respectful and loving to others. He respected the least among us, as much as those who are regarded as the wealthy and powerful. Next, we asked the teens on the street what their faith teaches them about respect. And what they think Jesus would say about the importance of respect. Let's check it out. My faith teaches me that you need to treat everyone as you want to be treated. I'm not really religious, but I mean, just in how I was raised, I was always raised kind of just mind my own business, you know, be nice to people, just treat people how you want to be treated. It teaches me that everyone should be respectful towards everyone else. Well, my religion, I guess, is Judaism, but um, no matter what religion we are, we should all respect for each other. Um, I guess my faith would tell me that you should treat someone the way you want to be treated and that you should show someone respect because that's kind of what you want to, uh, to get from someone else. Do want others as you want done unto you. You know, don't steal from people, don't lie. What do you think Jesus would say about the importance of respecting yourself and others? I'm sure Jesus would have a lot, of, a lot to say. I mean, I know, you know, he believed everybody was equal. Jesus always wanted everyone to be treated equal. Jesus was a peaceful person. I believe he wants us all to respect each other, right? If a lot of people look down on themselves and have low self-esteem. I think Jesus would look down on that in today's world. Um, I think it'd be really important to him to talk about that kind of thing. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, Jesus tells us, All that you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and it shall be yours. When you stand to pray, forgive anyone against whom you have a grievance, so that your heavenly Father may in turn forgive you for your transgressions. Practicing prayer and forgiveness can help us to respect others, even when we don't think we can. Next, Dan tells us what he thinks Jesus would say about respect, and how prayer has helped him with respecting others. Jesus will say the golden rule, treat others as you would want to be treated. Respect others as you want to be respected. And God has infinite amount of respect to give, so you can just always ask on him for respect, for self-respect. Well, during arguments I have with my sibling, I would like pray that like it gets over with because I mean, they could get really mean and I could get in like big trouble for them because I'm the oldest and I'm supposed to be the one who should know better about this. Yeah, prayer has helped. I mean, it's gotten through arguments. I prayed and like all of a sudden, the argument would just be over and like everyone would forget about it, so. Prayer has helped. The prayers I say range from our Father to a simple Lord just to help us get through the arguments. Humans will like n not always have that respect to give, but God is consistent. He will always have the respect to give. 
So when you pray to God, you will have that respect to give. And that will raise your like self-respect. Well, like a good role model for respect would be Jesus. He gave all people respect whether they showed the same respect or not. Why? Because he got his respect from God. He prayed to God. He was the son of God. They didn't feel like they were getting any respect from the tax collectors and the sinners. Jesus saw potential in them because men only see what's on the outside of people, but Jesus saw what was on their inside. He didn't hold grudges. He let it go. I mean, don't let it go then. It just leads to arguments. If you do let it go in the end, in the end for him, it led to his resurrection and the salvation of man. So what have you learned from our faith about respect? I think from faith, well, especially even just now from Dan, I mean, he's very insightful. And I think that we should expect human dignity and decency, but we have to get to know somebody before we can truly gauge how they're going to be respectful with us. But we should always give them the utmost respect that we can because they just deserve it as being anybody. As you look to Jesus, and he was like the master of being respectful. And just like praying to him and telling him that like you need more respect, I think that's wonderful. Yeah, and like Dan said, the golden rule is treat others the way you want to be treated. That's how everyone should live. And I know that sometimes when I am in an argument or something, and I kind of just be like, stop and pray and be like, I shouldn't be doing this. Like, because you, when you're arguing with someone, you feel like it's wrong, and like you know when you're disrespecting someone, and when someone else is hurting, it hurts you too. When you're speaking to a God that's a, a greater being than you, and at the same time, this being who is so much greater than us loves us, it, it's sort of a humbling experience. And in, in humbling experiences, sometimes I think we gain a little more respect for life and the people around us and for ourselves. When you really think about what you're doing when you're praying, you know, sometimes when I do, that, that helps me with my respect for others and respect for God. In respecting others, we're living in fulfillment of the law to love one another. The Catholic Catechism speaks to this by saying that all of the commandments are summed up in this sentence. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfilling of the law. Why is respect important to you? We'd love to hear from you. Contact us through our website. Or follow us on Twitter. The address is realfaithtv.com. Finally, be inspired to respect others from these lines from the first letter of St. John, chapter 2. For the darkness is passing away, and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light, yet hates his brother, is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother remains in the light, and there is nothing in him to cause a fall. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness. He walks in darkness and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. So be followers of the true light. Jesus Christ. And walk in the light by treating others, including yourself, with respect. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless.